pancreas is both an exocrine and an endocrine gland. Here we will be discussing the exocrine secretions of pancreas. This diagram is showing the pancreas and the inside of the pancreas also. So here we see that exocrine pancreas consists of many acinus which open into ducts. This green portion is showing the ducts. Ducts from each acinus join to form main pancreatic duct. This duct opens into duodenum and is surrounded by a sphincter known as sphincter of odile. But before the duct opens into duodenum, it is joined by a common bile duct. So here it is shown that common bile duct is joining the main pancreatic duct. Just like in salivary glands, both the acinus and ducts of the pancreatic gland contribute to pancreatic exocrine secretion. So this diagram is showing only the pancreatic ducts and the acinus. Acinar cells secrete juice rich in pancreatic enzymes. While cells lining the duct, secrete watery secretion rich in bicarbonate ion. Pancreatic enzymes digest all meal constituents and they are essential for digestion and absorption of meal constituents, which is not true for gastric enzymes or salivary enzymes. The secretion from duct cells increases duodenal pH because of bicarbonate ions. This is essential for optimum function of pancreatic enzymes. And this also prevents damage to duodenal mucosa by acid coming from stomach. So let us see what are the pancreatic enzymes. The components of meal which need to be digested are carbohydrates, proteins and peptides and fat component. Also they can be DNA and RNA. Pancreatic acinar secretion consists of enzymes to digest each of these components. These include pancreatic amylase for carbohydrates. For proteins there are two types of enzymes endopeptidase and exopeptidase. Exopeptidases cleave the last amino acid of the amino acid chain of proteins and uh, while endopeptidases act in uh, between the chain. So endopeptidases include trypsin and chymotrypsin. While exopeptidases include uh, carboxypeptidase and aminopeptidases. For fat digestion there is pancreatic lipase and for uh, DNA RNA digestion, there are riponucleases. Now, pancreatic amylase and lipase are released in active form. However, proteases are released in inactive form as trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen. Once these enzymes are secreted by acinar cells and enter into duodenum, trypsinogen is converted to trypsin in duodenum by a duodenal enzyme known as enterokinase. So, activation of trypsinogen occurs in duodenum. The activated trypsin then activates other enzymes, other proteases. So, chymotrypsinogen gets converted to chymotrypsin. It is very, very important that these proteases are activated only on entering duodenum where they act on meal constituents and not before. Otherwise, they can act on pancreatic parenchyma and blood vessels within it and auto digest the pancreas. Thus, there exist a number of mechanisms which prevent their activation inside the pancreas. These mechanisms include synthesis and storage of protease as inactive enzymes in cymogen granules. Then, as we have discussed earlier, activation of trypsin occurs only in duodenum by enterokinase and not earlier. Third, along with these enzymes, pancreas also secretes trypsin inhibitors so that in case trypsin is activated in pancreas, it is inhibited. So till now we had discussed acinar secretions of the pancreas. Now let us discuss the mechanism of watery secretion and bicarbonate ion secretion by the pancreatic ductor cells. This diagram shows duct cell. Left set is lumen of duct and right side is basolateral side. This mechanism of secretion of bicarbonate is quite similar to secretion of H plus ions in stomach. So inside the cell carbon dioxide combines with water forms H2CO3 in presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme which dissociates into H plus ions and bicarbonate ions. But in contrast from a stomach in pancreatic duct cells these ions move in opposite direction. H plus moves to basolateral site by sodium hydrogen exchanger. 
Bicarbonate ion moves to luminal site by bicarbonate chloride exchanger. The chloride re-enters into lumen by a chloride channel known as CFTR channel. The sodium ions which have entered into the cell by sodium hydrogen exchanger are thrown out by sodium potassium ATPase. This is how bicarbonate enters into the lumen of the duct and then water follows passively from the paracellular route.